It's definitely the old world. Donde esta el... <laughs> but with some new surprises. Yeah. Wildlife surprises. <laughs> Join me on a fast-forward search for the creatures that you would never expect to find in Europe. Are you sure this thing's not going to bite me? Look how beautiful that snake is. It's Spain. Oh, my God. to welcome you to our great Spanish adventure. Join me as we explore Spain in an effort to find the creatures that we would not normally associate with Europe. But first, our adventure begins there, the Rock of Gibraltar. Despite the fact that it's connected to Spain via the Iberian Peninsula, this land is under British rule and has been so since the 18th century. And there's an interesting legend about how Gibraltar has a connection to England. On this great outcrop of rock lives a primate. And as long as that primate is here, Gibraltar will forever be a part of England. Hey, don't do that. Be nice to each other. As we check this creature out, let's not forget primate protocol. We don't want to do any eye contact. That tends to startle these animals. It's a challenge. I don't want to challenge this animal. I want to observe it. Because next to me is the only primate living in Europe. And it is the only macaque that exists outside of Asia. This is the Barbary macaque. These animals are, for the most part, omnivores in the true natural sense. They're eating insects, they're eating whatever native forbs, fruits, and lichens. They really are beautiful, and it's neat to be this close. But I'm not forgetting that this is a wild animal, and it happens to be a male. And you know what? Male macaques got very big canines. So uh, the last thing I want to do is be bit by one of these animals. And that could happen if I were to not respect the space of these animals. These creatures are intelligent. They use their intelligence, just as human beings do, as a way to better survive in a very tough world. And Gibraltar is tough. There isn't a lot of wild food to be found. These animals have to work to survive here. These are gregarious animals. They depend upon each other for survival. But in the process of living together, you get tension and you get stress. And what these animals do to relieve the stress is they groom. Grooming builds bonds between individuals within a group. And 20% of the day is spent grooming. To turn your back to an individual and have it touch you shows companionship. And that is important because you need your friends to survive on the Rock of Gibraltar. Speaking of grooming, we've got one more stop in Gibraltar, the city of Gibraltar. <laughs> perfect place to launch our great Spanish adventure. From Gibraltar, we're going to make our way to Spain and travel up the Atlantic coast. Eventually, we'll arrive to the quaint city of Sevilla. Now, from Sevilla, we're heading west to one of Europe's most pristine and premier national parks, Doñana. While in Doñana, we'll explore its dunes, marshes, and forests. How's that? Oh, Orlando. Spectacular, thank you. Thank you? No, thank you. Okay then. Now that uh, we're all nice and groomed, like those macaques, we're gonna travel through this country in style. Alrighty, we're heading about an hour north outside of Gibraltar to the city of Jerez, or Jerez, famous for sherry, okay? Jerez is sherry in Spanish. 
Also famous because of the Hedat Zoo, where they are trying to produce one of the rarest felines in the world. And we're going to go check those cats out. Little kitten. This is the Herat Sioux and Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. What's great about this place is that it's a fantastic introduction into the biology of one of the rarest and most beautiful felines living in Europe. So let's check it out. I know, they're not the best looking toes in the world, but they're mine and they keep me bipedal and that's all that counts. So what was I doing? A little sanitizing, why? because I'm going in this enclosure to show you the crown jewels of Spain here in the Zoo. It's an animal with some luck we might see in the wild, but just in case, I'm gonna give you a little flavor of it. So why have we come all this way to be in the Zoo? Very important reason why. And the answer lies in these adorable kittens. Very, very precious animals. These are Iberian lynx. The smaller one is about eight weeks in age. The older one is about 10 weeks in age. And as with many carnivores, they use play as a way to build up their hunting skills, their survival skills. But what's happening in the zoo is no game, okay? There's a very serious conservation project going on because the Iberian lynx just might be the rarest feline on our planet. And the goal of, of the Terra Zoo is to raise a breeding population of these animals. Because unfortunately, it could quite possibly be that there are less than 200 wild Iberian lynx living in Spain. What has happened to this creature? Why have they disappeared? As with many animals around the world, these Iberian lynx are facing habitat loss. As the population of human beings in Spain grows and moves into the habitat outside of cities, these animals lose their homes. But there are other reasons. One is a disease which affects their prey. In the 1950s, a disease was introduced from Australia to Spain to control the rabbit population. But when the rabbit population dropped, so did the lynx, because rabbits are the primary source of prey for the lynx. But the whole thing about captive breeding, although very important, is just one part of the challenge. Because not only do you need to conserve them, and in this case in captivity, but you have to protect the habitat as well. Not only that, in the case of these animals, you have to protect the source of prey, rabbits, the Iberian lynx. Stay with us as the experience continues. Smells like Australia, doesn't it? Rob to find another creature that you would never expect to see in Europe. And uh, no, it's not the dog. Now he's not done toasting, kids. You just wait till that skin bubbles up. I, I love this little, this little car. This little hybrid It's like driving a ladybug. It's really pretty cool. All right, this is Marine Observation Park, okay? We're right outside of the city of Cadiz. Come on along. There's one of the observation centers here. It's a very small place. It's only eight acres in size, but it's all protected. What's really special about it is that it is habitat to a very unique reptile, an arboreal one at that. Now, to find one of these creatures, we have to look up into the trees. And if we're lucky to find one, I think you'll be very surprised. This is one of the types of trees they like to hang out in. It's a eucalyptus, not native. But you can smell that. See, how's that? Smells like Australia, doesn't it? You've guessed it. We're looking for koalas. But uh, they like to hang out in this tree. I'm not seeing any, and if they are here, they're too high. So let's just go into the interior of this little park. <laughs> Oh, oh, see right there? Look at this. See what it is? I knew it was a pine cone. I was only testing you. 
There's supposed to be hundreds of them here, but I'm not seeing nothing. All right, come here, look at this. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Shouted by the branches and the pine cones. Wait a minute, I'll be back. I need a tool. All right, now I've got a tool to get this lizard out. Now did I lose him? Nope. Now, he's not done toasting, kids. You just wait till that skin bubbles up and you know he's done. Look at this. This is the creature that I've come to find here in this little tract of habitat. Another interesting, unexpected surprise revealed to us in the country of Spain. This is the Mediterranean chameleon. This is a good-sized male. There are so many fascinating things about chameleons. For example, They've got stereoscopic vision. They have eyes on stalks. So one eye is looking at you while the other eye is looking at me. See that? One eye is looking at you, the other eye is looking at me. It can look both frontwards and backwards and upwards at the same time. It can move its eyes in individual directions. And there's something else that's really cool about them. You gotta check out the feet. See the toes? They're fused in two bundles. One bundle and another bundle. Zygodactylic feet. These are the only lizards with zygodactylic feet. There are birds with zygodactylic feet. For example, macaws. Stop! Stop, you stupid perro! Lucky for him, he's deaf. He can't hear it. But I'm hearing the chaos and it's making me confused. But the population of chameleons here is stable, okay? So what is neat about having zygodactylic feet? It gives you an amazing ability to climb. And of course, the camouflage. The color of this creature will sort of transform. And there's a lot of research now trying to find out why they change colors or how they're actually doing it. And there are many mysteries about these animals. The best mystery of them all is that most people don't know they exist right here in Spain. So. We'll release this chameleon and make our way to more adventures. Only 75 miles north is a beautiful and very historic metropolis. Well, this is Sevilla. It's easily one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. It's also one of the oldest in Spain. Very historic. And it's also home to one very extraordinary, one very secretive bird of prey. Permiso, donde esta el... <laughs> this is the Church of El Salvador. It was built in the 1700s. It's a great place for us to experience some of the history of Sevilla, but it's also a fantastic location for us to find an amazing animal that lives a secret life in the city. And to find that creature, I've got to find a colleague of mine. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good to see you. This is Juan Negro. He's an ornithologist. And he's a link in, uh, in our effort and goal to see another interesting creature which lives amongst the people of Spain. And to find these creatures, we need to look where? Let's in this great way. church, Church of El Salvador. So we have to go up, right? Juan, how old is this church? I would say 400 years ago, this is what filled. 400 years. Mm -hmm. These are some narrow staircases. What a great staircase and what a great church. Amazing. What's cool about this is we're surrounded by millions of people. And living amongst the people are kestrels, our birds of prey like that one right there. Extraordinary creatures. Not only are we going to see them, 
We're going to experience the research behind the kestrels with regard to understanding them and their conservation. So, oh, you've got a nest in here. Hey, th those are pigeons' eggs. Pigeons' eggs. Yes. We we'll look for another, okay. another hole in the wall. But pigeons. <laughs> well, I bet there is something up there. So check there. Ladder. Go up. Okay, I can. Can you hold the ladder? Yes, I will. Okay. Do you have a flashlight? Yes, I do. One. Guess what's in this hole? Tell me. I've got a little fuzzy chick about this big with a curled, curled beak, a little brown egg about this big, and what appears to be a beautiful adult kestrel. Go for Lesser it. Lesser kestrel. Go for it. So how do... We have to band it. You're going to band it? Yes. How do I capture it? Well, just use your hands. I just reach they in? Don't well, bite. Are you sure? Yes, I But do. they rip apart mice and voles and no, grasshoppers. I mean, don't worry. Go for it. I, th these are sensitive fingers. Be careful, then. They don't bite that much, anyways. Try. Look at this. You got the ladder? Yeah. Oh my God. Surprise, surprise, surprise. You Good know, they, job. Yeah. they Good told job. me, they told me we might find kestrels here. Did you think even for a second that I would reach in and pull this? So what do you think? Congratulations. <laughs> You've done a good job. You bet that. You thought I was joking, didn't you? I did. You thought I was going to pull did. out a pigeon, didn't you? Yeah. I didn't. Beautiful, beautiful lesser kestrel. Now, here's something cool. When these animals fly, kestrels are famous for their speed, OK? Look at the head. She can pivot her body, move up and down, but at the same time, her head is locked, OK? It's like the sights of a weapon. It's locked in, giving this creature excellent depth perception and field of sight when it comes to navigation and striking prey. And that's what falcons are famous for, for striking prey. And they, they do it at tremendous speeds. I'm just terribly excited. I had no plans of reaching in a hole and pulling out a kestrel. Let's find the bird in the shade. In the shade, good idea. That's a strong sun. All right, so the length is 220 millimeters. OK. And now I'm going to band the bird. It's 4-0. 4-0. 9-9. 9-9. 3-2-1. OK. That's the idea of this bird. So basically, by banding this bird, this creature has an identity, an identity for the scientist, Juan Negro. So he can track this creature. He can cover its mortality, its breeding success, its territory. So, all right, we put it back in the hole. In the hole. And just slide him in the hole? Yes, that's it. Don't worry, little chick, mom's coming. I'm just going to slide her in there. Slide her in there. Hey, Juan, man, thanks a lot. That was awesome. You're very welcome. Falcons in Sevilla. Who would have known? When the experience continues, there's a little bit of a fixer-up. I find my dream home. It's complete with children and pets. We're on the road towards Danyana. Before we head to that rich biological preserve, we're going to set up a home base in the small village of El Rocio, and that's probably 60 kilometers ahead. What is this? We have what appears to be an abandoned house, so where there are empty houses, there are sometimes snakes and other creatures. Let's give it a look-see. Looks pretty promising. Let's just look around, check underneath stuff. We just might find a very interesting gecko. Gecko that loves places like this. In fact, it's, it is the largest gecko in Europe. Actually, 
I can't pretend any longer. This is just a big surprise. Honey, you watching the TV? It's me. It's your husband. Guess what? You don't know this, but I've sold the house in the water. I took that money our parents set aside from us, everything in our savings accounts. Huh? I know, it takes a little vision, it's a little bit of a fixer-up, but where are you going? And look at this. When we have kids someday, we'll get them toys like this. Kids love stuff like this. Turn off the lights, Billy. I want to play with you. OK, let's go find that gecko. See this? Where there are black scarabs, there are other creatures that eat them. And they are hiding somewhere in the walls of this dilapidated house. Oh, 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 look at that, 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 look at that. That is the animal that lives here that has taken over this space. Largest gecko in Europe. And it just creeped down into here. Ho, 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 ho. Ow! Ah! <laughs> this is a Moorish gecko. Oh. That does not feel nice. I don't like that, Mr. Gecko. Stop that. Thank you. See, he didn't even break the skin. <coughs> but guess what? I just saw another gecko that was even larger than this one, but I'm not going to let this one go because it's a nice find. But see this brick right in here? for the price of one. Look at this. We've got ourselves two Moorish geckos. Stop, ow, oh, stop, stop, ah! They love to bite. Really interesting, interesting, successful reptiles. You find these geckos living throughout North Africa. You find them across Spain. They're also, oh, stop, 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 ah! Geckos are really, really cool, cool lizards. They are, I believe, the only group of lizards that have a voice box, have a larynx, so they can produce all sorts of sounds. And the famous sound a gecko makes is why it's called what it is. You'll often hear in parts of the world, gecko, gecko, gecko. And I'm not exaggerating, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like the word gecko. whether a stone wall, whether branches, even glass. It's all in the hands, in the fingers. They fan out, and there are these layers, and those layers stick to the surfaces these animals climb. And of course, the tail. This lizard does something extraordinary when encountered by a predator. When a snake or when a creature grabs onto the tip of the tail, no problem. This lizard, the gecko does a twist, the tail breaks off, it has bundles of nerves, it twitches, and sort of tickles about. The predator doesn't know what to make of the situation. It thinks it's killed the gecko, but in fact, the gecko is outsmarted the predator. It skates away, climbs away, and then, amazingly, it does this. Regenerates a brand new tail. See that? Amazing, amazing animals, Moorish geckos. So, let's release this animal back to where we found it. Continue our journey through Spain. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that quite wasn't uh, how I planned it, but he's gone.
just goes to show you that one man's trash is a Moorish gecko's treasure or Moorish gecko's castle. This guy's got all the beetles it wants to eat for the rest of its life right in this dump. So we're back on the road. We're heading west towards Dunyana. And up ahead, we're going to stop at our new home base, El Rocio. All righty. This is the small village of El Rocio. And as you can see, the streets are paved with sand. Why? Well, to answer that, you'll have to see how I'm getting to Doniana. Horse back. When the experience continues, take one horse, three amorous snakes, one pinch of good-looking turtle, combine, shape well, and what do you get? Doniana. This stuff is delicious. Welcome, good girl, ah, to Dunyana National Park. This is easily one of Europe's most prestigious and certainly one of the most biodiverse national parks you'll find in this part of the world. Why? Because this place brings together a great diversity of habitats. For example, you have forests, you have grasslands, you have dune-like deserts and coastlines, and you even have some great wetlands. See, the water isn't very deep, but it's very murky, very muddy. So to find the creatures, we really have to. Look at this. Oh, nice. Nice. This is the way I like it. This is the European pond turtle. Beautiful, beautiful turtle. Big, dramatic, and look at those spots. See those bright eyes? I love the eyes of these turtles. This one is a female, okay? If it pulls its head in, it has its own hinge. Watch this, let's show them, come on, sweetheart. It has a little hinge right here, almost box turtle-like, right there, in the upper third of its uh, plastron. I think this is just a real pretty turtle. It has those nice sort of yellow spots on its body and great pupils. And of course, that awesome turtle smile, almost gamma-like. You know what? There is something over there. So let's put him down and check it out, okay? Look at this. Two. I just saw another one right here. Oh, three. So what were you guys doing, huh? Look at this. Oh, nice, beautiful, beautiful snakes. European water snakes or pond snakes. My guess is we interrupted some sort of courtship behavior, perhaps. OK. In many species of snakes, males are smaller than females. So quite logically, we could have two males pursuing one female, the females will produce pheromones, breeding chemicals, smells, which will attract many other snakes. Now, something else is neat. If you spend a lot of your life in the water, you're moving through the murkiness, you want to be able to see, right? Check out those eyes. Those eyes are positioned at the top of this animal's head. So, as it's careening through the water, its body can be submerged. You also want to find the food you're going to eat. In the case of these animals, frogs, crayfish, young birds, rodents that venture too close to the water's edge, the larvae of amphibians, okay, large water beetles. These animals right here, they need to conceal their bodies. They need to disappear. So these creatures do that with excellent, excellent camouflage. Look at this. See? Perfect for matching this uh, sludgy algae growing around them. By the way, this stuff is delicious. It's um, 
I think what I really like about these snakes is that they're really mild tempered. Back home when I was a kid and I would uh, find a banded water snake, I'd come home with this thing hanging off my arm. My mom would panic and, uh, and then I'd let it go. But these animals are making no attempt to bite me. I don't know if that's because they're still a little chilled or they're just really gentle tempered, but they're wonderful snakes. And again, a great example of the secret you find in Spain. You probably have these animals living in ponds throughout this country and Europe. And when people are sitting on their blankets, nibbling on their manchego cheese, reading some light pages from Dante's Inferno, they don't even know that these creatures are swimming right next to where they sit. Great, great critters, the European water snakes. So let's set them free. And continue moving onward. Besides the dancing, we'll get a chance to meet the Beatles. Well, at least a beetle. <clears throat> Anyways, not the band, the insect. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this terrain. Again, another example of the unexpected here in Spain. When we think of the landscape of this region, what usually comes to mind are grasslands, pastures, windmills, right? But look at this, a beautiful dune system. And that's what's great about exploring Doñana is that it's got four major ecosystems, and this is one of them, the dunes. And they sweep and they swash their way to the ocean. It's excellent habitat for wildlife. And to track these animals, we look to the sand and we look for movement. There are tracks here. We've got some deer tracks. For example, right here, these are deer tracks. They've blown over, but you can see where the hooves have dragged through the sand as these animals have moved. See this right here, look at this. Zorro, zorro, fox. This is gonna be crazy. Check this guy out. Very interesting creature. The sacred scarab, or infamous giant dung beetle. And what it's rolling is not a mud ball, but a crap ball. This is a big pile of dung, OK? And uh, it's probably from one of the wild horses that lives here in Donyanyan. And so what it's done is it's actually balled this, this massive dung into an almost perfect sphere, and it's pushing it with its back legs. It'll travel a great distance, perhaps not a great distance for you and I, but for a creature this big that has to push a, a giant ball of scat that's five or six times bigger than itself, that's a lot of work. But the instinct drives this creature whew, to tumble and roll towards its ultimate destination, which will probably be over this bluff. See what it's doing now? Look at this. Excavating a good area for that scat. It's uh, doing a little navigating here, seeing where it wants to go. And then hopefully it'll go back and retrieve that scat. What are you doing there? If it's right here. There you go. So what it will do is take that scat on the other side of this bluff and then push it down into the earth, into a tunnel which it has dug. It then will deposit an egg in this ball of scat created by a horse will be the primary resource, which will feed the larva of this dung beetle. And what's really cool about this is that this dung beetle, he's like, I walk so hard and you make me go back in time. I don't like that. What's really great about this is it shows how organisms are connected. Nothing is wasted. What began as scat for a large creature becomes a valuable resource to another organism, in this case, this very beautiful and somewhat stinky dung beetle. Look at the head of this creature. Look at the front of its head. See that? 
It's like a bulldozer. It uses its head to plow through the sand, to excavate, to navigate a pathway for this big pile of dung. But he'll go right back to work there. Now, there's something else that's very interesting about this sacred scarab, this dung beetle. And that is, it's not only transporting scat, it's also transporting other creatures. Because as it moves these great distances, this animal becomes a bus. A bus for parasites. If you look right there, you look, he's trying to find his scat, he's smelling around. If you look on top of the These animals appear to have wings, but they don't need them. Why fly if you can get a free ride? And in the case of these little animals, their transportation is this beetle, the dung beetle. We'll leave this creature back to its dung and continue our trek. We're in the field all the time, we're traveling everywhere, but we need a break, and this is the best way to do it. A bit of Spanish culture, we get the food, and of course, the ancient art of flamenco. Good stuff. Oh. All right, mas, mas por favor, mas. <laughs> Only on the Jeff Gordon. Oh, yeah, so, all right, all right. Ready? Ready? I don't know how to do that, ready? You gonna show me how to do it? When the experience continues, a creature that you would never expect to find living in Europe. And this deadly guy right here. Wow. Look at this. There is nothing remotely transitional as we move from the dunes to the forest. These dunes are literally moving forward from the ocean inland and swallowing up the habitat like one great sandy amoeba as it moves. But this is where we want to go. See this? Mediterranean pine forest. Look at this. We have the cavity right here. And we have definite evidence of a creature entering it. It's probably the creature that excavated it. Now, if I was in any other part of the world, for example, if I was in Asia or Africa, the first thing that would come to my mind is a monitor. Okay, Varana Day. But this is not created by a Varana because they don't live here in Europe. But the size of this hole and the nature, look at, look at these, these feet marks and this tail and, and body and belly which was dragged through, tells me that it can be only one lizard. But it's a lizard with powerful jaws, so I do not want to be bit, but I'm just gonna carefully fill in there. Okay. It is definitely occupied, and the creature is facing this way. The tail is like this, so I'm gonna have to reach in there, grab it behind the head. Resistance there, like all those roots. All right, there we go. <sighs> Look at this. Check this lizard out. Extraordinary, extraordinary lizard. This is the oscillated lizard. Look at this guy. See that? It's taking its defensive posture, mouth open, showing you that pink, that bright colored mouth tail twitching. Now, why is it called the oscillated lizard? It's because of these, those beautiful, bright, hey, marchismo, those big, bright, beautiful blue spots. Now, this is a male. See this? If you look at the thighs, see that, where my index finger is? Those are the spurs, which tells us that this creature is definitely all male oscillated lizard. 
And look at the size. I mean, it's huge. You're talking about a two and a half foot lizard and its body is bigger than its tail. From snout to vent, it's like 13, 14 inches. And of course, I don't know if you can see that, but if you look at the surface of the tongue, you, what you'll see is that it's slightly forked, serpent-like forked tongue. Hey, 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 thank you, thank you. We're almost done. The oscillated lizard, easily Europe's most dramatic and certainly largest lizard. Now this looks really promising. Hear that? Listen to this, come here. I just moved this log right here and it made a sound. I'm thinking hopefully not like a, like a hornet's nest. I'm gonna just go around here. We've had some activity, see this hole right here? possibly like a, a European boar looking for grubs, but that's not what I'm interested in. Something under here made a sound. Okay, now I'm not hearing it. Oh, there it goes again. Hear that? Right in it. Listen to this. Listen. There's definitely something under there. Okay. Look at this. There's a head sticking right out. This is definitely a venomous viper. Wow. Do you see that? Shh. Look at that. Perfect camouflage. Perfect, perfect camouflage. Look at, oh, now he's on the move. Where are you going? This beautiful, beautiful serpent. This is the Latastes viper. You know, they often say the European vipers are slow, but this guy, he's moving. He's been energized by the sun. Look at this, my hands are shaking. Look how beautiful that snake is. It's got that amazing rostrum which curls up. It's like a rhino. And of course the scales. Look at where my finger is with little keels running longitudinally against the back of each one of those scales. And look at the belly, almost cinnamon-like. And many of the creatures we've discovered are eaten by this animal. For example, the uh, Moorish gecko we discovered in that old abandoned house. This creature loves to eat the geckos, not when they're up in the trees, but when they come to the earth. A wonderful discovery. This is probably a good time for us to release this animal back where we captured it. So I'm gonna go right over to these logs and carefully Magical stuff. Well, that's it, folks. We traveled through Spain. We discovered its amazing creatures. So until we meet again, I'll be very much looking forward to our next adventure together, only on the Jeff Corwin Experience.